Hey friends, it's Rebecca here. Um, today we're gonna walk through how to set up a workflow in Dubsado for photographers. Now Dubsado is a client management system that is really, really great for housing um, all of your clients and sending contracts, invoices, all the things. And what I love about Dubsado is that a lot of their stuff can be automated. And so today I kind of want to show you some of that automation power using workflows. Um, now workflows is a feature that a lot of photographers don't take advantage of. And I don't know why, because it is so powerful. It allows you to automate so many steps of the process that you don't have to do manually. And so I kind of want to just give you an overview and show you the power of Dubsado workflows. So we're going to have um, a brand new workflow here today. I'm going to title it um, portrait workflow. And from there, we can go through and start adding actions. And so if you want to select a payment schedule, you can because you can trigger things based off of like when a, pay a payment was made, but for now we're not gonna do that. So the basics of a workflow is that there's an action and then a trigger. So the action is what happens, what step you want to happen. And then the trigger is when that thing is supposed to happen. So for example, let's say as soon as this whole workflow is started, um, let's say it's triggered from a scheduler. So a client fills out their scheduler, you know, selects a time slot. Um, then what's the very first thing that you want to happen in their project when it's created? So you could add a tag. Um, you could send emails or forms. There's obviously a lot of different actions that you could use. Usually the first thing that I do is I add a tag. So let's do that and I'll show you. Um, when do I want it to happen? I want it to happen immediately. So I'm going to say, um, after all previous actions are complete or after workflow is started. And so for this one, I'm just going to say after workflow is started, zero days because I want it to happen immediately. Um, and then you can select a tag. So for this one, I'm going to do portrait session. Tags are just a way for you to really simply organize your photo sessions. So if you shoot a lot of different types of sessions, for example, maybe you do maternity and newborn and um, seniors and families, you can have a different tag for each of those. And in your projects tab, which is right here, you can filter um, all of your projects based on whatever type of session. So you can use tags really creatively, um, but for this one, we'll tag it as a portrait session and we're going to hit apply. Now, whenever um, you add a new step, let's say you have this workflow um, already attached to another project and you forget something and you want to add a step. You can add a step and then click this right here, update project workflows, and that lets you um, take whatever steps you added and it syncs it up with your newest version, if you will. So let's add another action. And you know, there's a lot of different things you can do. So the ones that I use most often is change project status. So um, in your projects tab, you have the visual workflow where you, it's like buckets. You can um, have your projects be in a different bucket with a different project status. And so say you, um, once you send your contract an invoice, you want it to go into the sent bucket so you can change the project status. Um, or once the contract is signed, it can go into the booked status. Um, you can control what that looks like. Um, you can send emails, maybe a, um, for me, like I send my client experience guide and it in the email is a link to a um, Google Drive file. So I send them a PDF and I link that PDF in the email. So you can do that. You can send a form. So I like to send my clients a questionnaire and um, that can be created in the forms template right here. Um, you can send a form and have you know an email with the link to it. Um, a lot of different things. Let's see, created to do, if you wanna use this tasks right here, maybe after a project is created, you create a to do and say, um, and you can literally like type whatever you want. Um, don't forget to 
you know, send contract or whatever, you know, <laughs> hopefully that'll be done automatically. But um, I don't use to do's very often because I use Trello um, for my regular workflows. Um, but you could in here if you wanted to. And so typically the next thing you would do is send a contract, right? And so if you want it to happen immediately, so after all previous actions are complete, after that tag is added, I want to send a contract. And so you can send an email and apply it to the portal. If you didn't want this contract to send just yet, like for me, I like to send my contract and my invoice together. And so I may only apply the contract to the portal. And then in the next step, when I create an invoice, then I'll send them together, which I'll show you in just a second. So, you know, we apply to portal, um, you select a contract that you want to send, and then you hit apply. Um, and then the next step would be to send an invoice, right? And so for me, I would say create invoice. Um, and you can add the line items. If you have predetermined packages, you can do that there. Um, for the sake of this, let's just make a sample portrait session. I spelled it wrong. <laughs> okay, description, maybe um, full gallery included. And it's gonna do bullet points here. Um, and I'll say 30 to 60 minute session. Quantity, one. Price, let's say 550. And then, you know, tax, we have to do sales tax. So I'm going to my 8.25% sales tax. And then you can add a category or you can just add the item. So um, because I want it to send in an email, oh, you can choose a payment schedule. So I'm gonna choose my 50-50 payment schedule. Um, that's something that I set up in my templates. And um, that's basically saying 50% is due now and 50% is due at the time of their session. And so right here, I'll click send email with invoice. And so you can um, select a canned response, which is in the email template section. Um, and you can include your contract and your invoice together. So it already has your invoice link here. You can go in and hit smart field, link, contract link. And so now this email has their contract and their invoice in one email. Remember in the step before we, add, we only applied it to the portal that made it available to link here. Now I want to send them together. And so I have an email template that I send um, that is in the canned responses. You can type one out or you can create an email template. You can use my email template, whatever you want to do. Um, but that is your contract and your invoice. And so you hit apply and that'll send. Um, and so looking at it from here, as soon as this workflow is triggered, let's say they, you know, pick a time slot on the, your scheduler. Immediately what's going to happen is this tag is going to be added to your project. It'll create this contract, which um, you would already have made. And um, you can have smart fields um, to fill that contract in. And so, for example, um, you can have it automatically add the appointment start date and end date, their appointment time, all of those things. Um, that way you don't have to edit this contract. It can just auto fill that information um, and send it right away. And so then our invoice is gonna be created and the contract and invoice are gonna be sent together. So this is like the first part of any good solid photography workflow because um, this is you know the, the most important parts. And then from there, you get to just um, elevate the client experience. And so you can include things like a questionnaire or like a client experience guide like I do. Um, you can send after the session a request for a testimonial um, and all of that can be automated. And so um, whenever you do, that's where you use these, um, these triggers. So you can have something trigger before the, the project start date. Let's say you want it to be one week before you can send something. If you want it to be two weeks before, you can send something. Um, one thing to note with um, you know, the, the triggers here, there's a difference between project start date and appointment 
start date or appointment schedule. If you use a scheduler through Dubsado, you can't use project date, you have to use appointment date. So just make sure that you understand that those are two different things and they trigger differently. Um, another thing that you could do is you could trigger something to happen after a form is completed um, or after a form is not completed. So let's say you send your, your client their contract and their invoice and they don't you know, sign it or they, um, maybe your questionnaire, um, you send their questionnaire and they don't fill it out. You can say after form is not completed, let's say one week. Um, and you would already have to apply it to the portal in a different step, which I haven't done yet, but, um, you can have it resend that questionnaire, um, just to try to re refresh it in their inbox and do whatever you need to do. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. Again, lots of actions, um, that you can do lots of triggers. That's one thing that I really love about Dubsado is that it's very customizable. Now I know that this whole process can get very overwhelming if you're not naturally, um, like a workflow kind of thinker. Um, I am, I love workflows. I love, you know, the automating process and everything. And so I've actually created a whole portrait um, workflow that I use for all my portrait sessions and my mini sessions. And um, I've made that available to you. And so I'm linking it below if you would like to check that out. Um, if you use a different system, like not Dubsado, maybe you use HoneyBook or um, <clears throat> Sprout Studio, you know, there's lots of other things. The, this workflow can be um, molded and transitioned into whatever system you use. And so um, you can check it out, but I have basically done all the legwork for you. I show you what emails to send in there. I show you exactly what steps and what triggers and everything that you need to do to create that. And so um, definitely check that out if this is not your strong suit. Um, but if you're using Dubsado and you're not using workflows, I highly suggest doing it because it is a way to simplify your process and really um, you know, take hours that you may spend doing this stuff that you can spend on something else because it's gonna do it automatically. It's truly amazing, it's very powerful. Um, so I hope that this was helpful to you as like a sort of overview. Um, if you have questions about Dubsado or you would like to see something else, you know, me walking through another part of Dubsado, let me know um, in the comments so that I can add that for you and um, keep this tutorial arsenal um, loaded. So hope this was helpful for you. Um, don't forget to um, follow me, subscribe, um, and we'll get more out for you later. Thanks.